So welcome. And uh, we're here today with master artist Sharon Lynn Williams to find out what kind of unique skill set she brings as one of our Masterius, one of Masterius's incredible mentors. And you've been with Masterius since the beginning, right? Uh, not not Close quite to? since the beginning, but it's been two years. Okay, so yeah, and it's celebrating third years now. Yeah, yeah. so it's good. Um, so I'm Karen New Weidman. And I have been a member with Masterius for a year and a half and had the privilege of being uh, one of Sharon's, well, she's been mentoring me for what? Oh, oh, well, over a year for most of that time. And, uh, and I've had the great opportunity now to navigate for Sharon's new mentorship group that's starting very soon. So um, welcome. And, uh, and Sharon's going to be sharing with us one of her key mentoring methods of finding your star in your art and business. So I'm going to hand it off to you, Sharon, and you can just share what, uh, how you do this. Okay. Thank you, Karen. By the oh. way, it's wonderful to have you being navigator for me this time. I'm very excited by that. Karen is very much of a team player and loves to um, get the groups really gelled and participating in between sessions. So I really see my navigating my, sorry, my mentorship as a group effort. And it takes both of us equally to do a good job on that. So just wanted to clarify that right at the beginning. Um, yeah, so finding your star. So I have that as a motto when I think about um, composition. So getting your story, what's your story, where, what are the big elements that tell your story, and then eliminating everything that doesn't support your star. So when I look at, you know, Karen's work on the wall behind her, I can see, you know, what is her, what is she trying to talk about, and then see that she has eliminated all of the stuff that's might be there, but isn't really supporting the main star, which is usually a, in a landscape painting, um, is an object or something in the landscape, or it could be a fit person's face in a crowd, for example, or you know anything like that. But to have a single story for each painting that um, that speaks the loudest, that says what you have to say, and I think probably the biggest problem people have in that is that they don't that they're working from photographs and a photograph has an even eye and sees everything equally and as an artist it's our job to pick out what we're trying to say one thing in each painting so instead of three or four different things that just happen to be in the photo to choose what it is you're trying to um, say in your painting what you're trying to talk about and maybe from one photo um, you might get three or four or five different paintings so I do teach a method called shape mapping which is a con uh, compositional tool to um, you know decide pick maybe five or six different viewpoints of your photo and then decide which one of those um, you might want to start with there's it's bigger than that though, um, because it's also once you have your compositional layout, then what are you gonna do with value? And value you can use to help tell your story. And then of course, color. And we can apply how many millions of different color schemes, probably not millions, but many, many different color schemes to that value study and have a totally different mood. So all elements the the shapes the values the colors all go to support what it is you're trying to say in this particular painting um and not feeling like you have to get it all in one painting so that's the idea for me when i talk about finding your star in a painting it's a really easy way to think about while you're doing your work because it's just like one word star right and and so it's really easy to to remind yourself of, oh yes, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, I also think that finding your star applies to your business. So what are you going to do in your business that sets you apart as an artist from what everybody else is trying to do? So 
in my mentorship groups, I am very much involved in helping each student to find their own voice and method and how they're going to handle, you know, brush and paint and canvas and all of those things in order to set themselves apart from what everybody else is doing. And I mean, there's, you know, thousands of people in Masterius, students in Masterius, what makes them each, you know, unique. And so rather than trying to um, help people paint like me, I've very much try to dig in and help them define for themselves what their style is and why why do they want to paint the way they do and have you thought about this that or this or that or this right um so just to i try to push on the edges a little bit of what people are comfortable doing i firmly believe that um, this statement by a mentor i had at one point is is very true that you create your best work when you're on the edges of your ability so I feel that it's my job to sort of push on the edges a little bit to to help my students expand and broaden and to really think about why they're doing what they're doing and how can they best say it and what parts of your process are individual to you and how can you make those things more prominent um, to help help in that. So in my mentorship, I cover mostly fundamentals um so we talk about those you know value color shape elements in our in our um technical areas uh in our mentorship but i being an artist is so much bigger than that so this is an emerging group which means that artists are you know starting to sell their work and that's all those those things are really important um those technical aspects you have to have down before you sort of enter into that marketplace but as artists we're continuously evolving and changing and growing our growing our uh, skill set so it's not that you need to be there in order to sell your work it's you know at what point do you enter the market how do you enter a market in a way that gives you flexibility to sell your work and not get pigeonholed into oh they liked that mountain painting so now i they need five more the same of that mountain painting and how to avoid some of the pitfalls of falling into that gallery stuckness that i know a lot of people especially years ago when galleries were the only way you could market your art um, fell into so i like to talk a lot about business being the business of being an artist and for emerging artists that's top of mind for them. So I have had great expertise. I've taken many very high level marketing classes and business classes that so I have that information to share. Um, I've been painting personally for over 40 years and teaching for over 35 years. So I have lots of experience. And because I've taken, I've taken workshop from over probably 60 artists in my time. I even ran my own workshop company so that I could bring well-known artists into Calgary to teach um, so that I could get an education. And what I realized early on was that I have a real passion for teaching. So not only did I learn from them technically, I watched how they taught. Mm -hmm. So I learned from all of those 60 artists what to what's a good thing to do in your teaching and what's not so great to do in your teaching. So, um, cause not all artists who are fabulous painters are also fabulous teachers. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, um, teaching is, is probably one of the biggest things that I do. It's, it's my calling, it's my passion. And, um, I love to get people excited about what they're doing, challenged by what they're doing and, and, you know, really diving in kind of thing. So, yeah, so that's sort of what I bring to the table in that area. Um, lots of experience with websites and social media and all kinds of things, including, you know, your mailing list and your CRM systems and how are you going to show up to your audience in all of 
different ways that we have nowadays to show up to our audience. And again, that's an area that's constantly evolving as mm -hmm. new social media platforms come out. Um, so I think that, you know, there's always there room for growth there and what worked last year might not work this year. So how do we flow together in this? Because I consider myself a growing artist, just like my students. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I never, I hope I never come to the table looking or acting like I've got it figured out because I certainly don't have it figured out. You know, I'm, I'm growing and learning and evolving just like my students are, which I think really puts me in a different place with my students because they feel um, maybe more comfortable with a teacher who is well connected to the various stages of, of the process of mm -hmm. uh, becoming an artist, so. Mm -hmm. That's a long-winded way of saying what your star <laughs> is. <laughs> well, that that is a lot. And yeah, you come with a wealth of knowledge and experience, which is fantastic to, uh, you know, to pass on to other artists that are trying to learn and grow. So, yeah, we all we all stand on the shoulders of the te teachers who taught us mm -hmm. and and so by having so much experience with artists in all media and in all subjects um whether it's floral or figure or landscape or abstraction i i do all of those things so i'm not i'm not the kind of artist who does one subject in one medium so mm -hmm. my my goal my jazz in my own art career is always pushing the boundaries, always trying something new and different to mm -hmm. see what, you know, what I can bring that's different to the table. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You do a great job of that actually when, uh, when you're talking about that earlier, because I found that there were times that it's, it wasn't completely out of my comfort zone, but you, um, you have this knack to ask the right questions to help just help think more deeply into what we're doing <laughs> into finding our star and uh and just to kind of just give that gentle push that stretches us, us out you know so it's it's still that's on that borderline but <laughs> but yeah. it's you're not pushing us out of that line but you're making us like okay in pushing us in that direction to say okay yeah we need to get there and right. and uh and that's how we grow right so and i i think as a teacher i understand that people learn differently mm -hmm. i have add personally so i know what's going to work for me as a learner and mm -hmm. so i have tried um, my whole teaching career to have multiple ways to say the same thing so that if this one doesn't stick, maybe this one will help. And mm -hmm. that's also the point of the group is that, you know, I can say to somebody in the group, so how did you hear that? And then we can have a dialogue about it. I, I really do not like that. I'm the teacher, you're the student mentality in a mentorship group. I rather see our group as a group of peers. Um, yes, I have a lot to bring to the table, but so does every one of the students have lived experiences. And because they're all at an emerging level, um, they at an emerging level is a huge, you know, level of abilities, right? When I was, when I first started painting in watercolor, I found early success, which was a great thing but also a hindrance because i it stopped me from growing because i was successful here and it took me a long time to jig that oh no that's what i need to do mm -hmm. so um you know i think that everybody brings a level of experience to the table in a group like this and everybody's viewpoint is valid and i really try to encourage the students when we're in a critique situation to um, participate, throw in your ideas. Well, what, what do you think would happen if blah, blah, and then let's talk about that. It's not just me saying, this is what you should do and then end of discussion. So mm -hmm. I, I think for me, a, a core value is the group dynamic that happens in a, in the master's program, which is why I love it so much. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's good. So, um, yeah, you have, and, and like you had mentioned, you have a variety of, um, uh, talents, <laughs> skills and in, in different mediums too, right? So you have experience in watercolor, oil, acrylics, you even do, is it cold wax? Oil and cold wax and in cold caustic, wax, which is hot wax. Caustic. So, um, gouache. <laughs> <laughs> gouache, there's, there's so much that, um, you know, it's, it's not like so much experience in different mediums that, um, you know, again, a wealth of knowledge here, um, from that, uh, to offer anyone who's in any of those mediums to say, okay, how do I find my star in this? Because I think I found with navigating, uh, certain groups, if it's only catered to one, um, like say if it's just watercolor and then, then only watercolor artists come. So, but this is a, such a diverse, it can be such a diver, diverse group that, um, it's not catering to one medium at all, right? So it just, um, you're basically just looking at the fundamentals, like the the bare bones really of an art piece to to help help us grow. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the great thing. So it's, uh, you know, and to understand the mediums too, right? So if someone's coming in with encaustic, I, mean, I have no idea <laughs> how to use that. Um, but it, it's great because you have that knowledge and uh, to help someone if they're struggling in a certain direction in that too. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Actually, when I was learning all those different media and I had to learn all those different media because I ran a workshop company mm -hmm. and I had to go to all these workshops. So it got to the point where I didn't know who I was after studying in all of those subject matters mm -hmm. and all of those media. But I value that experience now because I know how to paint in all of those media. So if a student has problems, I can, let's say something needs to be glazed. Well, how you do it in watercolor and acrylic and oil are very different processes. So, you mm -hmm. know, I'm able to help them with the technical components of their medium, um, which I think is is a big benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And then you know, a little bit was mentioned on, well, a little bit, but a lot <laughs> in business. Um, oh, we have someone joining us right now. Um, hi, Leanne. I'm oh, just, just connecting. Hi, Leanne. How are you? Uh, she's not there still, yet. Still connecting. Technology. It is. Anyway, carry on, Karen. We'll let so, um, oh, here we go. Hi, Leanne. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Very good. Welcome. Welcome. Um, we've, uh, I might not be able to see. Pardon me? I might not be able to stay, but I will if I can. Okay, that's fine. The recording will be up on the, um, the Masterius YouTube channel. Um, after I'm not sure when, but you can catch all what we were talking about before. So um, yeah. and please ask any questions yes. that you've got. That's what we're here for. So yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, I was just actually going to ask Sharon about um, the business aspect of like how how do you find your star when you're trying to um, build your brand, or um, maybe we'll just kind of stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that that's something that we talked about earlier in terms of what sets you apart mm -hmm. and then trying to figure out a way to emphasize what's different about you um, mm -hmm. in a crowd of everybody, especially, my goodness, how many landscape painters are there? <laughs> like, ah, everybody's painting yeah. landscape. How are you going to set yourself apart from that? So we do in the mentorship um, go through that. There's so much, like Karen's been with me our session lasted for a year and a half, and now she wants to stay with me to be my navigator. So that says something about um, <laughs> what what value there is, I think, in the mentorship. But um, yeah, because you know we spent the first what eight months on fundamentals, and before we got even talking about you know all of the business stuff, how do you set up? 
to shoot your own work? How do you, yeah. what do you do if you want prints? You know, I mean, there's so, so much. And we didn't, we never even got to email. No, but I, yeah. <laughs> which isn't to say that, um, you know, you, if you sign up with me, you have to be there forever, but there is an awful lot to talk about when we talk about having an art career. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're yeah. also very open. I always ask my navigator at the mid month meeting to talk about what people want to learn. So mm -hmm. I don't come in with an agenda. I basically respond to the needs of the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. You just kind of, um, you're actually very flexible and kind of roll with the punches really <laughs> to say the least. I mean, it's, we, we, had had like you know a topic from you know because you'd give homework out and just what to work on but it's um great to kind of expand on that and what the group brings into that um it's really good because it, sometimes it goes in a whole other direction and that's okay too <laughs> right yeah I yeah. remember once with our group I was all prepared for a particular thing all about email and newsletters and somebody had an important question because their show was coming up and threw that away and just dot, dove right into the new subject, which is, it, it's nice because it keeps me on my toes. And um, I much prefer to come with answers to people's burning questions rather than my own ideas about, you know, what I should be teaching you. Although I do manage to make sure that we cover the fundamentals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good to have that that balance, um, not just to, to have the business. It's good to have that. Um, it's kind of like you can't have one without the other, right? If you're going to be a professional artist, um, then, you know, you need to have the business skills and you also need to have the technical skills. And um, yeah, it's almost like which came first, the chicken or the egg? Is that <laughs> <laughs> all pretty intermesh, isn't it? And I was going to say, if you have a question, um, I noticed your camera freezing a bit. You can always just put it in the chat and we'll be happy to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. I'll do that. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm just, I'm, I think I'm out of questions right now. Um, <laughs> so Karen, let me ask you a few questions. Oh dear. <laughs> So what, what do you feel you bring to the group as navigator? Oh, that's a good question. Um, as a navigator, I guess my desire to learn and grow, um, you know, I think that's everybody's desire. So that's that commonality of, you know, we, we want unity in the group. I, I like to have uh, unity and harmony and just, you know, be a team player and, uh, and learn and grow with others and um, cheer, cheer people on, cheer your artists on. You know, You're like also very involved in the group. So it's not like you just show up to navigate, but you're involved throughout the month. So that's something I think that makes our group maybe a bit unique in that we form a Instagram group chat group mm -hmm. and where we can just chat back and forth. I'm very um, present in that. And also if yes. anybody has questions or needs help with their work between the times of my sessions that I'm, I try to always be available and give feedback right away. So I'm pretty attentive all throughout the month, not just in the two hours um, sessions that I have with you, but I've also found Karen that you are very happy to respond when somebody puts in a question and make suggestions or comments yourself and be a, like you said, a cheerleader. I think you do a great job on that. I think the dynamic of the group is really important to both of us that yeah. we have a group that has mutual respect and, um, get is interested in each other's lives so it's not just well we're only here for you know the mentor to do a demonstration i know that there are groups like that but um we are much more interested in building community in our group right yes yes community that's a key word yeah that's a really um i think that was the word that i was trying to think of um yeah. And it's, I find it too, it's really beneficial when, um, it's, you don't it just, um, 
you know, show up. Oh, we have a question here. We have a question. Um, trying to find it. Uh, you'll find that in the replay, Leanne, because we talked about that right at the beginning. So if you watch the replay, you'll find out all about yes. finding your star. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, so I found that, you know, if you're um, involved by, you know, checking in, it's not just the once a month, you know, mentorship with you. Like you said, you are present. And I know, like in the past, we've had a, uh, you know, an in, in, Instagram chat group. And sometimes that's not accessible. Not everybody's on Instagram, but it's, it's still even we have the, um, our, the group feed, right. To, you know, post a picture up there and you're pretty quick to, you know, I know I've had, uh, questions or I've had a time crunch and trying to get ready for a, an art show and say, what does this look like? And you've been great with, um, critiques and sort of taking us back to reminding, um, reminding us where, where is our star in the, you know, in the composition, just kind of, if we get lost along the way. So it's just kind of taking us back to, um, to the original, you know, mining sketch of where was this going and what happened, you know, where did the, where did it get lost and okay, what, you know, needs to be changed and, and, uh, and you've been great for that of, you know, in that time crunch to, <laughs> It's to the rescue. <laughs> say, yeah, you need to do this. Or, so or what would you what would you say um has from doing that mining exercise that I do with my students is the biggest takeaway for you from that? Um the biggest takeaway, well, I continue to do it. And it's actually it's actually caused me to really simplify and um and look for you know the simplicity of something like so i'd have a reference photo but it's just not using the whole photo right just taking apart from that or even moving something just to kind of get that um the composition so it's just i think it's the simplicity that really had helped and then um when you go down to the simplicity of it to find it then to build on, it's actually helping me use my own creativity instead of just going from the photo, right? And Perfect. that yeah. that's my goal in teaching it. So I I'm very much love to help my students attach themselves to their creativity because I think what happens, I find a lot of students have just um in the beginning, we want to be able to copy something, right? So that we can have those skills to be able to copy, which is really important and mm -hmm. very much needed. But Absolutely. very quickly, you need to start relying on your own creativity or else you get stuck. Yeah. Always. So you need the perfect photo in order to paint. So you've got a stack in your computer of 20,000 photos and you yes. spend a day looking through for one perfect photo. And, you know, God rarely presents one perfect composition without you having to do work in it and put yourself into it. So um, that's what I hope that the mining does. So when we do this mining exercise, which I do as a free program, by the way, in January, if anybody's interested, you can follow me and hook up when we do that free mining challenge um, in January. But um, that's just one piece of the whole mining thing, right? So the shapes, shape mapping is one piece and then the value mapping and then the color mapping so from one photo if you had four shape maps and each of those four shape maps had six different value patterns and 20 different possible color schemes oh my goodness you could paint one photo for a number of months and create a whole series based on one photograph so i think by making those choices and by shifting out of the reality of what's in your photo. So maybe you have a picture of a forest, a love painting forest, and um, it has, you know, sort of this structure. Well, what happens if you added a light from behind? Or what happens if you side lit it? Or put it as a nocturne? Like those are, those are things that are gonna involve you and your own creativity and your own imagining and dreaming about what something might look like. And that's where I find um, 
that's where I find um, is the biggest benefit of that whole shape mapping mining. It's called mining your photos of which shape mapping is just the very first start. So Leanne says, that's my problem yeah. trying to find a perfect photo. And, you know, I know that when I first started, I could only paint that which I could draw. So I was really limited because I wasn't a very good drawer at that point when I started. And um, so I could only do what I could copy. And so by learning, challenging myself to learn to draw, which I did by going to life drawing, if you can draw off the figure, you can draw anything. Um, I taught myself how to draw. And so now I'm not, then I was no longer stuck with having a perfect photo because I could draw anything if I put my mind to it. And, you know, you might need a couple of references just to help you with basic shapes and, and stuff, but, um understanding how to draw is uh something we haven't even touched in in our, in 18 months in our group other yeah. than drawing for composition mm -hmm. so um yeah that's it's it's huge art is huge there's so much to learn i think in comment to um Leanne's comment of trying to find a perfect photo I have found uh, I'm not a photographer so I don't have the perfect photo <laughs> so the photos that I've kind of like ransacked through are pretty ugly and I've actually just had to change where the horizon line is or move a tree and you know and just from you know you know just from the shape mapping you know to get that, you know, I work with it with the values and say, okay, my values are, I think going to be like this, but then I might even change that. So I don't know. <laughs> so again, yeah, I have yet to find a perfect photo. So unless there's a photographer that has done it professionally to say, wow, I'm yeah. And again, I won't be painting from that either. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, th I think being a better artist makes you a better photographer too. Yeah, because when you're out, instead of just click, 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 you know, you spend some time in your environment. And if you're attracted to something, I encourage my students to say, OK, sit down, think about why is it that you're attracted to this thing you want to take a photo of and try to remember that because that then attends the photo you get back. And so we all know we go out, we see something spectacular and we take a picture and we get the picture back and go why did I take this picture? So remembering what it was that excited you um, is part of understanding what you might bring forth um, in, in your painting. Yeah. And that's actually, that reminds me too, that Sharon, you also are a plein air painter and you've also done, you know, journaling too, right? So things like that, not just, you know, um, uh, taking the photo, you know, if you have time to just even sketch out where you are, um, you know, you have expertise in um, how to do that. And, you know, even if it's just for a short time, right. And also that reminder, I, I remember um, way back, you said, okay, well, what did it feel like for you when you were at that place, right? So, uh, and, and that again is, you know, helpful into finding the star in your artwork, right? Is what is the meaning behind it to help with finding that? Yeah, I really think that being painting plein air, if you're a landscape painter is a necessity, if you're going to understand how light works, because your camera won't catch those yeah. subtleties, like the bounce light that you might notice when you take the picture it will be eliminated. Um, cameras also can't deal with strong contrast, right? So if you've got really light lights and really dark darks, your camera's just not, doesn't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So it leaves out a lot of the information that you would actually see. So when you go outside and decide to plan air paint, or you can plan air paint in your mind. So if you sit mm -hmm. in front of a thing and say, okay, if I was gonna paint this, what would I do? What colors would I use? What does the day feel like? What What is it? What do I feel like? Mm -hmm. Right? Am I happy? Am I sad? You know, how is that 
my individual mood going to play into the painting as well? So even if you don't have your paints with you, you can plan air paint in your mind by asking yourself all of those questions. What would I, what's not important here? What is important? What is it that's really getting my attention? And why is it getting my attention? And you could even just make, take a photo. And I do this a lot. I'll take a photo, open my notes app, put the photo in my notes app, and then type in the answers to some of those questions mm -hmm. so that I have the photo in my notes app along with my notes, right? Mm -hmm. And that's enough to then get back into that place that I was. Um, it's harder to get back to something a decade ago that you took, even though it's a great photo, it's like, well, I can't remember what that was like, um, which is fine. If it's got good bones and good shapes, for sure, you can make a painting out of it. That's exciting. But it it's just takes on a different little bit of a different um, cast to it. And I think when we're traveling um, and things are new, so you have an artist's eye, you notice things most people don't notice. So really taking the time while you're away to sit in front, just sit and contemplate the thing that you're interested in taking a picture of. I mean, I go out with artists and I see them, you know, we're hiking and they're snap, snap, snaps, and they're not even thinking about snap, snap, you know, they're not taking the time to maybe compose be behind their viewfinder, which is that's thinking about art while you're taking a picture. So mm -hmm. taking better pictures, you know, what happens if you stand on this table and take a picture? Or what if you lay down on the ground and take this picture? You know, the idea of taking different viewpoints. If this thing here interests you, what about taking a picture here and here and here, you know, different mm -hmm. angles of the same thing? Um, that'll also help you understand how to model form to make in our landscapes we don't want them flat most of us want don't want a flat picture plane most of us want some sense of roundness or depth in their form um how does the background that's happening that you're not even paying attention to but your camera pays attention to how is that playing with the thing that you're trying to take a picture of mm -hmm. so um you know, trying to to think about that, and if the if the background's going to be disruptive for what you're trying to say, can you get yourself in a different position to eliminate that? So some ideas, um, even if you can't be outside at that particular moment, but I do, I um, do a pen and ink and watercolor quick sketching um, course, and um, that that's like. 20 minutes get down exactly those things real quick you know and those mm -hmm. can either lead to a painting when i first started doing that um we would i would go hiking with my family i had young four young kids at the time and we would always hike to these most beautiful places and we'd stop and have lunch and I, I, oh, this is so beautiful. So while we while we were eating lunch, I would make a sketch of where we were, and then I would eat on the trail on the way back. And that that so I only had twenty minutes um, to do some artwork in that in that time. But I thought that those would be preliminary studies for other paintings. As it turns out, that's become my my like my diary, and mm -hmm. and I they're beautiful for what they are, and I haven't tried to make them something different i mean i could and i i do sometimes but it's not the usual yeah so. nice so then i won't share that i've done the snap 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 while i'm in the car saying because i'm like oh, oh I we've that. all done I'm that, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we all i mean you do what you can do right yeah 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 no yeah, that's that's good <laughs> um Leanne, do you have any other questions? We'll wait and see what she puts in. Yeah, so talk about the kind of group we want to have. Oh, uh, I think just people who are willing to learn and grow, uh, artists that are looking to grow, um, uh, grow in their technical abilities along with you know their business I mean everyone's at different stages too if you know some just want to do it for themselves but um you know it is good to have it's beneficial if you know 
you're looking to explore that aspect, um, or if you have that um, that background and want to grow even further, um, I mean, the great thing is, is that Masterius has had these art shows. And so even if it's your first show, it's a good way to, you know, get your feet wet and learn and grow on how to, how to show, um, show your work. Um, but yeah, I think all in all, it just kind of, um, I think there's things, there's possibilities to things that, you know, we can do together as a group that is, you know, outside, um, because I mean, there's so much uh, with online um, community of things that you can, um, I think there was one thing that we had seen um, where there was some, some artists, ha uh, master's artists had got together to put together a pack of um, Christmas cards. Mm -hmm. So just from their design. So that's kind of neat to um, work together on a, like collaborate on a project like that um yeah there's would, lots of different things I would say we want people who are community people absolutely right yeah. and yeah. and it would be great to have risk takers like people who are willing to take a risk and try something new um, yeah. probably not so great for people who just want to do what they've always done um so Leanne wrote you two are doing a great job Sharon is your group full no we no, this is a new one this so is a we brand are new one we yeah. start next week on September 12th from 1 till 3 p.m. Mountain Time. And you are in the East, right? So it's 3 to 5 in Eastern Time, Karen. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. I'm, uh, yes. Yeah. Eastern Time. Yes. 3 to 5 <laughs> yeah. for the group time. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, yeah. um, and just for people who don't know the Masterist model, do you want to talk about, you know, replays and all that kind of, and how they go away and all that kind of stuff? Um, yeah. So uh, for anyone that is new to Masterius um, or is not part of Masterius yet, uh, for membership, we meet once a month uh, with our mentor. So we meet once a month with Sharon. Um, but again, we it's kind of like, like a social media, like a chat feed, uh, uh, like kind of like Facebook and um, where you can post in the feed and Sharon is very present online that way. Um, and then we also meet uh, with a, a mid month just as a group without our mentor and just discuss things of um, build our community and of how we want to grow and learn. Um, and sometimes it takes a bit of the pressure off without the mentor, but I don't find Sharon <laughs> very intimidating or anything. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yay. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, just things like that. And, uh, you know, it's the, after the monthly mentorship meeting, it's, there's the recording is posted, whether it's the next day or, or so, and it's up for the month until the next monthly meeting so you have time if you end up being away and miss that you can catch the recording um so that's you know that's a great thing too you know sometimes you know you pay for a membership and feel like if you have to miss you know something then you know it's not till another month but that's good that we have recordings so um so that's a benefit and then there's there's lots of other perks too you know when you join as a member or if you're looking for a new group or looking for a change to you know to grow um in something different then um yeah we just <laughs> Sharon offers a lot and so much experience in teaching and yeah so that. want to talk about homework Karen how do you oh goodness how homework. do you find yes. me how do we homework forget class? homework <laughs> Uh, Sharon gives out homework. Um, not too much, not too much. Not too much. <laughs> but she also will remind you too a few days in advance. Is there any homework? Has anyone posted their homework yet? So <laughs> yeah. And and generally, what kind of assignments would I give? Um well, I think it's just basically um, you know, what I think what we were working whatever we were talking about uh in the meeting prior then you would just kind of give a little challenge 
Um, so say, um, I'll give an example. Um, one time we were working on, on color and uh, limited color. So Sharon had us make color wheels, which I actually still do this because it's been a mind blowing <laughs> exercise. <laughs> it was so fantastic. And uh, so just working with three colors plus white and, and black, and you make your own color wheel from that and, in a sketchbook um, or mixed media book. And, and, uh, and so then you had us post the different, uh, so whatever, different palettes we had used. So if we used phthalo blue or ultramarine blue or cobalt blue, you know, let's see what all those look like with the same yellow and the same red, you know, just to see what the variety is. And then, uh, so we'd, do those and then post those into the homework and and uh, and share with others what our findings are we're like scientists so that's right <laughs> yeah that's right yeah, yeah i i try not to give homework that is outside of your normal studio mm -hmm. practice so um in terms of um you know whatever anybody's working on whether uh, it's landscape or still life or abstraction or whatever. It is difficult, by the way, to have somebody who's an abstract artist in a group where everybody else is a more representational artist. So in my group so far, I've pretty much had representational artists, mostly landscape painters. Mostly what I do is landscape painting, so that works for me, but I do lots of other things too. So um, trying to find a group that fits with you in what you are doing is really helpful. So, you know, if you're an abstract artist, you might not want to come to my group, even though I would teach you the fundamentals that you need to know and all of the business stuff and none of that is different. You might prefer to be with someone who you admire as an abstract artist, you know, kind of thing. So um, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's something that I would say. However, I think that um, the, like I said, the fundamentals apply to, mm -hmm. you know, all of those fundamentals apply to anything that you're doing. Um, anyway, uh, so Leanne has gone. Yeah. Um, oh, she's recommending us to her friends. Yay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. We're hoping we'll, we're hoping we'll, we'll get enough people to launch next week. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And if anyone is interested, you can just go on to the um, masterius.com uh, and you can, when you go into search for mentor, you just type in Sharon Lynn Williams and, uh, and then um, it'll, it'll show the new group that is, uh, you have a few groups, I think on there, but the new one that is um, starting next Tuesday, uh, September 12th. And, and, and I think um, mountain time, you said it was one, one till three, right? Yeah. Um, so it'll stay. And, I, and I would also say too, that if you can't join next month, you can always join another month. Like yes. it's not like we open and close. So okay. our group will be open for enrollment past the 12th of September, if the 12th of September doesn't work for you. Yeah, it, absolutely. So but it is, um, it is good to get in at the beginning because we lay the foundations, the fundamentals at the beginning, generally speaking. Um, usually we start the first class, uh, we start with a critique. And the mm -hmm. reason that I like to do that is it gives me an opportunity to see what my students are doing, what level they're at. Um, so I know how to focus, you know, my energies before I get to know them very well. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I will ask people to submit two or three paintings. Their two or three most recent paintings, not their two or three best paintings. Mm -hmm. um, there's could be a big difference in, in those, but I just want to see where people are right now. And, yeah. and then from, and we'll discuss the work and, discuss uh, at the first meeting, you know, what kind of things are you interested in learning about um, and sort of get an idea of a plan. Um, I like to um, sort of be able to hit something technical and then something business related, if I can, in the same kind of uh, in the same session. So we usually start with celebrations. So we talk and challenges whether or not, um, you know, maybe somebody says, you know, I've, 
you know, got this situation in my life. How do I deal with that? You know, I did this commission and this lady is just never happy and I have to keep changing it. What do I do? So um, we start with sort of some of that real life. Where are you right now? kind Mm -hmm. of stuff before we get into the teaching and we'll often almost always have a critique of component in the in the classes depending like if we're doing if we're doing something where I've been asked to demonstrate a technique and that I know that's going to take a long time we don't always get into all of those things but um it it varies from session to session wouldn't you say yeah yeah, absolutely. And, and even uh, to if um, I was actually going to say, if, if you're not, um, you're not doing this as a business, it's, but you're wanting to, it, you know, it's great, because um, it's not, uh, not an intimidating group, like you can have people at all different um, stages. And, you know, I just remember, uh, one member had come in and had never shown, didn't even have a website and then got into the Mastrius show, online show. And now like after what, a year have all these, you know, new opportunities and have grown so much as an artist. Like it's just incredible how, to see them at this stage and uh, just from where they were 12 months ago. So it's just it's mind boggling. And, you know, but it, it's great because, you know, you learn from each other and, you know, at your different stages and, you know, and that's what we're here for. And I think the great thing too is, is that our groups are small. Um, I think it's, is it a maximum of eight, um, eight members uh, per group. So, um, so that's, that's the nice thing that, you know, it's not like this, you know, college course or anything we have so many you know people trying to learn um but no it's uh it's nice uh it's nice and small and uh you know you just form new friendships and yeah it's it's great I've I've been really happy to see how your work has evolved since Mm -hmm. we started working together I think when I remember back to what you were doing before and what you're doing now, like your work is just so much more involved and deeper and more, more interesting. And you're taking more things into account than, you know, in the pictorial space than you did before and stuff. And and that, that's a real joy for me to see my students really grow and really hone in on their way. You know, I think that's, that that's been a really wonderful thing, part of Mastrius for me as a teacher. Yeah. <coughs> me. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting to hear your perspective too, right? Like, so not just as, you know, a member watching, <laughs> it's you know, great to hear what the mentor has to say and, and see. So yeah. yeah. I think it's, I think it's also great for the students to watch a mentor change mm-hmm. and grow and <coughs> excuse me to see learn from their experience what's happening in the mentor's life as someone yeah. who's you know a little far further along in the road i have an analogy that i love to use with my students is that there's this ladder that goes up to the heavens right and we're all somewhere on this ladder and mm-hmm. sometimes we're going up and sometimes we're coming down sometimes we fall off you know and we need help to get back on um so that no one is any better or anything than anybody else we're all just at different places on the ladder you know i get stuck in my art just like you guys get stuck in your art what well sharon what do you do when you're stuck in your art right Mm -hmm. and then i can give you some some ideas this is what i do and then you can parrot it back to me when i get stuck and say well you know remember when i was stuck so i think um treating the mentor as a member Mm -hmm. um of the group is is what I'm looking for because I need support too, right? Mm-hmm. We're all in this together, and that's kind of the the real kind of attitude that I want to be pervasive in our group is that we're all peers. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's and that's the other thing too. Like, I mean, when you've done your critiques on on work, um, you've actually taught um, us um, to even further how do we uh, self critique right because I mean you get zoned in on your artwork and you're you're glued to it that you're not even seeing what 
at times when you you just got to stop and walk away and then look at it the next day with fresh eyes but sometimes you don't even see it until putting it up there in the group and then you have a bunch of different perspectives coming out and say okay well I see this or I see that what about this and and it's not that you have to even change it you know or follow everybody's um, advice it's still it makes you think of things that you're not seeing and look at it in different lenses to say oh I didn't think about that maybe okay that's a direction that I need to go in and um, so that's an, the other thing is is that I have found that because times you can get discouraged when you get <laughs> your work is critiqued <laughs> because you're you're vulnerable and you created this piece and then someone will say something but it's still it's actually to help us grow um and and that's the thing is is growing pains right because I mean you can't grow without having <laughs> pains that's true so. anything worth getting is worth working for yeah and mm -hmm. I, I think too um you know really trying to encourage other people to look at other people's work and see what you know, might strengthen it, but also look at it and see what's in there that I want to steal for my art. Mm -hmm. You know, look, she had that perspective. That was so good. I never thought about that. I'm going to try that. So there's so many benefits of being mm -hmm. long to a small group. We get to know each other really well. We get to learn from each other uh, really well, hear different viewpoints. I mean, I think that's huge. Absolutely yeah. huge. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that ours is a wonderful group and you should all come and join us. Exactly. And, uh, exactly. Yeah. I would, sorry. I would say that anybody who's interested has any questions, reach out to Karen or reach out to me. SharonLynnWilliams.com is my website and you can find me on Instagram at SharonLynnWilliamsArt. And you, Karen. I'm uh, New Weidman Art on Instagram and uh and new weidman art is my dot ca is my website um and so yeah you can oh my goodness i'm losing my voice now <laughs> um yeah you can uh reach out to us either way if you are on masterius i'm sure you can even message uh in the chat message uh you can find me at i think i'm just under karen weidman under that but <laughs> try that um yeah so if you're interested in how to uh, find your star in your art or your business, and you've kind of any of these um, discussions has intrigued you, then yeah, for sure, um, reach out to us, ask us, join our group, and uh, starts next week, and uh, yeah, we'll have lots of fun together. Thank so you so much. Karen. It's, been, it's been fine. We okay. we managed to get through this hour and yes. still had things to talk about. So that's there we go. <laughs> So thanks very much, everybody. And we're hoping to see you in our group next week. Okay. Thanks, Sharon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.